हे परमात्मा दुख यून के दुख के नाश करने वाले इस गरीब नादान पर चपर दिया कर और इसके वे दुख दूर करो हे प्रभु हे परमात्मा हे प्रभु हे परमात्मा दुख यून के दुख के नाश करने वाले इस गरीब नादान बच्चा पर दिया करो और इसके दौर करो हे प्रभु हे परमात्मा दुख यून के दुख के नाश करने वाले इफ गरीब नादान बच्चा पर दिया करो और इसके बेदुख दूर करो हे प्रभु हे परमात्मा You must take the child to Dr. Morris. I had the same kind of burn on my hand, and he healed it for me. But I dare not go. The holy man will save him, I am sure. I am your husband's brother. I tell you, you must go. If he were here, I know he would agree. He would insist that you take the child to Dr. Morris. Hey, Prabhu. Hey, Paramatma. Sabu wants to take the child to Dr. Morrison. He cured Sabu of the same kind of burn. If he should heal the child, the people will start to doubt your powers. I would forbid it. I shall. After I leave, you remain here and see that my orders are obeyed. It is the will of the gods that the child should remain on the altar all night. In the morning, he will be healed. Return to the house of your husband. I cannot leave my baby. I shall stay by his side all night. Very well, if that is your desire. But remember, he is not to be touched, or the spell will be broken. He Prabhu, he Paramatma. Dukh yung ke dukh ke nash karne wale, if garib na dan bacha par diya karo, or iske. बेतुक दौर करो हे प्रभु हे परमात्मा हे प्रभु हे परमात्मा
Wake up. Come, we must go. But if we leave, the spell will be broken. The holy man's spell has done no good. The child burning with fever. We must get to Dr. Morrison at once. Come, make the child ready. I'll get the elephant. has decreed that you must not take the child away. Step aside, Kumar. Your spells are meaningless. <laughs> Dear doctor, if your United Nations would send you the medicines that you need, our chest team would not suffer these constant interruptions. Well, as I've told you before, Mr. Trosk, they send me only the ingredients. I have to compound my own formula as I need them. Besides, these constant interruptions give me a chance to study my next move. And you, the bottom of your glass. Oh, yes. Yeah, that ought to give you food for thought. Come in. Dr. Morrison. My brother's child has a burn on his hand, but the same kind of rock which burnt me. Please put some of that medicine on him and cure him like you did to me. Here, put him on the couch. When did this happen? Yesterday. My brother's away in the jungle scouting for wild elephants. He was playing with some rock he found under a tree, and suddenly he started to cry. Hmm. Get up. 
it up. No, wait a minute. Yeah, we'll put some of this on it. Hope it works as well as it did for you. These constant interruptions. I'll see you tonight. Maybe we can finish one game in peace. Now, take him back to the village. And if his arm bothers him tomorrow, Put some more of this salve on it and give him one of these pills. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Dr. Morrison. I do not care if Shankar does punish us for disobeying him. My baby will be better. Constant interruptions. Doctor Angus Caldwell, London Public Health Clinic, Department of Scientific Research, London, W1, England. Dear Angus, I'm troubled by a strange coincidence which has occurred here. I have recently had occasion to treat two of the natives from Tangri, the nearby village, for a very peculiar subcutaneous inflammation which seems to have all of the symptoms of an X-ray burn. Both of these natives, one an adult and one a small child, sustained these burns after handling rocks that were exposed by some newly uprooted teak trees. It may be that a uranium deposit or a grouping of one of the radioactive ores is present in this area. But of course, I don't want to communicate these thoughts to my superiors at United Nations until I have something more substantial to offer. Obviously, I can't ship you one of the samples due to the suspected radioactivity. So I do wish you would arrange to fly over here and do some of the analytical research at which you have no peer. Analytical research at which I have no peer. Up to his old tricks. Trying to butter me into something, that's for sure. If you will cable the date of your arrival to the Department of Interior, Airport 7, which is not far from here, they will relay the message to me via short wave and I will be on hand to meet you. Sincerely, Paul Morrison. Same old Paul. When he was studying with me, he was forever trying to flatter me into something or other. But methinks this time it will be of no avail. If that young whippersnapper thinks I'm going to haul these old bones clear to India for another one of his crackpot brainstorms, he's got another thing coming. But Dr. Caldwell, he may really have something. After all, two such cases. Oh, it's probably something they ate. If Paul would pay more attention to the work on hand and quit dreaming things up, they'd all be better off. But suppose there really is a radioactive grouping of some sort. Wouldn't you like to be the one to confirm it for the benefit of humanity? And besides, the trip would do you good. You've been working pretty hard lately, and you haven't had a vacation in a long, long time. My dear Dr. Ames, it is my studied opinion that you should be the one to go. After all, this sort of thing is right in line with the work that you're doing at the Royal Academy, and your analysis might be just what they need. But 
Dr. Caldwell. I, really, I... My dear Dr. Ames, but really, don't forget benefit to humanity. No, I must insist that you go in my stead. You will make arrangements to leave as soon as possible. I'll cable Dr. Morrison, telling him that you'll be leaving for Tangri in a couple of days. Well... All right, sir. Good, good. It might be worth the trip at that. I'm sure it will. Won't Paul be surprised when he meets my able chief assistant, Dr. Ames? <laughs> uh, Miss Briggs? Yes, sir? I'd like to send a cable, please. Touch it, your Dr. Morrison can cure you again. Namaste, your holy man. Everything is ready for your blessing. भगवान तमहरी रक्षा करे तमहरी काश में तमहरी सहाय थाय करे और तुम हे सफलता देवे हे प्रभु भगवान तमहरी रक्षा करे तमहरी काश्त में तमहरी सहाय थाय हे परमात्मा हे प्रभु हे परमात्मा भगवान तमहरी रक्षा करे तमहरी काश्त में तमहरी सहाय थाय करे और तुम हे सफल हे प्रभु हे परमात्मा नमस्ते शंकर नमस्ते आई कम टू सीक फेवर स्पीक मेक नोन योर विश दस अ रोग कस्टर नियर द रिवर व्हिच आई सो ग्रेटली डिजायर गो विद द हंटर्स कुमार विल लीड द वे द टास्कर ऑफ योर चॉइस शुड बी रिटर्न्ड हियर बिफोर द सन हैज सेट कुमार लीड द वे नो सबो You disobeyed me. You don't go with the hunters, but stay here in the village.
Kumar. See? That's the one that I want, the one that's standing away from the rest of the herd. Oh, he must be a bad one, or he would be with them. That's the one that I want. Look at those tusks. Mr. Trosk has spoken. I'll go tell the beaters which one you are to have. Shankar order you to stay in the village. Kumar, I am the jungle boy of Tungari. The hunters would not be able to capture the Tusker without me to lead them. But I can lead them just as well as you. When you get to be the jungle boy, then they shall obey you. Now they shall obey me. Now go back to your work and help them to prepare to return to the village. I pulled out the elephant back! One of your choice has been captured. As soon as they finish tying him, he will be led back to the old stockade. That's good, Kumar. Let's go. Nothing wrong with a chief, but a good old-fashioned stomachache. He'll think I've done wonders for him with these sugar pills. No wonder the way he eats. DI Airport number seven to Dr. Morrison. DI Airport number seven to Dr. Morrison. Come in, Dr. Morrison. Over. Paul Morrison to DI Airport seven. Morrison to DI Airport seven. Come in. Over. Hi, Doc. Jerry here. I have a cable for you from London from a Dr. Angus Caldwell. Thanks, Jerry. That's the message I've been waiting for. Read it to me, will you? Over. Here it is, Paul. Can't get away at present, but I've convinced my chief assistant, Dr. Ames, to make the trip. We'll advise you of flight number and time of arrival as soon as possible. Regards, Angus Caldwell. Over. Thanks, Jerry. That's great news. Give me an ETA as soon as you can, so I can be on hand to meet this Dr. Ames, whoever he might be. Over. I'll keep in touch with you, Doc. DI Airport 7, over and out. Cebu, get me that old satchel in the corner, will you? Where are you going, Dr. Morrison? Well, let's see, asbestos gloves, crucible, stove, tongs, Lead, heat. That ought to do it. What did you 
Jose, where are you going? We're going into the village to see if we can talk Shankar into giving us a sample of your burning rock. Come on, let's go. It is still here, Dr. Morrison. Well, let's have it. I dare not touch it. Oh, come now. Dr. Morrison, as long as Shankar has that sign on it, no one dare touch it. Oh, but I must have it, Sabu. Well, let's go see Shankar. Oh, Kumar, do you know if Shankar is in his hut? No, Doctor. Shankar went to the river to watch them haul logs for the stockade. Thank you. Come on, Sabu, let's go. fine teak logs from this cutting, Mr. Trusk. Should pick all you want before they are used for the building of the new stockade. Thanks to you, Shankar. I always seem to be here at the right time. It is the will of the gods, Mr. Trusk. They're hauling so many logs, Shankar. Is there something special about ready to take place? Yes. As soon as the building of the new stockade is finished, the hunters will go after the wild herds on the other side of the hill. Namaste, O Holy Man. Greetings, O Holy One. Hello, Mr. Trask. Hello, Doctor. Shankar, I would like to examine the burning rock very carefully, and I beg you in your wisdom to permit me to remove it. It must not be removed or the spell will be broken. But the child is cured. If it is removed, the evil spirit will return. No. But Shankar, there's a possibility that this burning rock may be of great scientific importance, and it could be valuable to your people. I must examine it thoroughly. No. Very well. But please think it over carefully. Perhaps you can convince the spirits that I should have it. Come. Why were you not at the Fireland last night? What business is it of yours? If you spend less time with Mr. Trost and more time with your work, he would be better off. What do you mean? If Shankar ever find out your dealings with Mr. Trost, 
He would ban you from our village forever. Dealings? What are you talking about, dealings? Kumar, I have seen you take gold from Mr. Trous. As long as you have your hands on this gold, you forget your work, you forget everything. Why, you... Shoshila, the child is cured. You should never doubt my word again, or the gods will be offended. No, Shankar, I am grateful for everything. Namaste, Holy One. Namaste. Last night I saw the great fires of the beaters. Is this the drive of which you spoke? Yes, Mr. Trusk. The stockade is finished and the drive will be underway soon. While the hunters return, we shall have many fine beasts to choose from. With your permission, your holy one, may I wait the return of the tribe? You may. And while I'm waiting, may I remove this burning rock for you? No, Mr. Trusk. As long as it remains here, it can do no more harm.
Hello there. All arrangements made? Yes, sir. I'm taking off right after dinner and should land at the Department of the Interior Airport number seven in about 30 hours. Good, good. I'll cable your approximate arrival time to Dr. Morrison so that he can be at the airport to meet you. Fine. Miss Briggs. Yes, Dr. Caldwell. Would you kindly bring in those reports I asked you to compile for Dr. Ames? Yes, sir, right away. Thank you. Sure you won't change your mind and come along? No, thank you. But be sure and keep in touch with me. I want copies of everything that you do. All right. I'll probably be back on the job here in a couple of weeks. Good. Here are the reports you asked for, Dr. Caldwell. Thank you, Miss Briggs. Here you are, my dear. Thank you. And I'm sure you're going to have a lovely trip. Good luck. Thanks again for everything, Dr. Caldwell. Not at all. Goodbye. Now is the time for you to pick out the ones you want, Mr. Trusk, and I'll mark them for you. Thank you, Kumar. I'll let you know. Doctor? Yes, Abu, but I'm more interested in finding a burning rock. Dr. Ames will be arriving soon, and I must have a specimen. Next time we'll push some trees, I'll find you one. Number seven, FOE number three nine five to DI Airport number seven. 
Come in, airport number seven. Over. DI airport number seven to FOE 395. DI airport number seven to FOE 395. Over. Number one motor struck by lightning. No fire, but motor conked out. They have to crash land if storm doesn't let up. Talk me in if you can. Losing altitude rapidly. Over. Give me a reading so I can find you and I'll try and talk you in. Airport number seven to Dr. Morrison. DI Airport number seven to Dr. Morrison. Come in, Dr. Morrison. Over. Morrison to DI Airport seven. Morrison to DI Airport seven. Over. Hi, Doc. Jerry here. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. What do you mean? Over. I was in radio contact with FOE number 395 just before dawn. He was caught in the storm and having trouble. Then I lost contact and couldn't get back to him. Any ideas, Jerry? Over. Our scouting plane reports clouds of smoke billowing up out of Hyder Pass, but he can't get into land. I'll send out a search party as soon as I can round up some of the natives. Okay, Jerry, I'll send Sabu out immediately. Keep me posted if anything further develops. Over. Right, oh, Doc. And if Sabu gets any info, contact me immediately. Over and out. Sabu. Do you know a fast way to get into Hyder Pass? Yes, I can cut through the jungle and swim across the river at the bend. Okay. And get back here as quick as you can. I must return before sundown, Doctor. The hunters will be waiting for me to prepare them for the big water drive.
Are you all right? I think so. Were you on the plane? Yes. One of the motors was struck by lightning. The pilot tried to land, but we crashed into the mountain. I must have blacked out when we hit, but apparently I was thrown clear. The sound of the explosion brought me back to consciousness. Where's the rest of them? They must have all been killed. An explosion and fire. I went over there. Everything seems to have burned up. <laughs> Come, can, can you walk? Can you walk? I think so. I will take you to our village, Tungary. What's that? That is our village. Stop here. You can rest a while. The herd will soon pass. Are they dangerous? Will they bother us? No. Not unless we bother them. a big circle. That means the mother cow is going to have a baby. Is that what they always do? Yes. Now look, when the tusker trumpets, all the males will leave and the mother cow will come to the center.
they stay like that? One little while. As soon as the mother cow can get up on her feet, then they will move. life pattern of their own. Come, we can go around them safely. But Jerry, are they sure there are no survivors? Over. Not as far as they could determine. Everything was burnt beyond recognition. Two of the search party remained at the scene of the wreck to see if they could identify anything. All right, Jerry. Let me know as soon as they return. I'll have to cable Dr. Caldwell the bad news, but I don't want to upset him until we're absolutely certain. Over. I'll keep in touch with you. DI Airport number seven, over and out. <laughs> was wrecked, but I found this lady there. Now I must return to our village. Here. I'll, uh, I'll make a pot of tea, and then we can talk if you feel up to it. May I have a glass of water, please? Do... Morrison. Paul Morrison. Not Dr. Paul Morrison. Yes. <sighs> I'm Pamela Ames. Did you say Ames? Yes. Well, then you must be the daughter of the Dr. Ames I was expecting. Not exactly. His wife? No. As a matter of fact, I am the Dr. Ames you were expecting. You... Oh, but Dr. Caldwell's message, he... Well, he led me to expect a man. Oh, I'm sorry. Of course, my papers have been destroyed, but... you can check my description with Dr. Caldwell if you wish. Oh, come now, Dr. Ames, it's... Just that I didn't expect an attractive young woman like you to be a research scientist. Thank you, Dr. Morrison. And now, how about that glass of water? Of course. You can rest while I'm making the tea. Later, if you want to tidy up, you can rinse your things out, and we'll hang them in the generator room. They'll dry there in no time at all. Fine. Now tell me, Kumar, is there no way of removing that burning rock from the village? Shankar will not permit it. Couldn't we replace it with another? It must not be touched. But uh, tomorrow, they will fell many more trees for the new stockade. Maybe we can find what you want. All right, Kumar. I'll see you in the morning. So you see, Dr. Morrison, even if we do find a specimen of the rock, we'll still have to start from scratch, since all my papers have been destroyed. Well, first, we have to get a specimen. But tell me, Dr. Ames, how did an attractive young lady like you happen to become a research scientist instead of a society belle? The fact that I'm a woman mean that I can't accomplish anything worthwhile? I might ask how you choose to be holed up in a place like this when you could be catering to those society bells back in civilization. Perhaps we're both treading on dangerous ground. Well, maybe we'd better change the subject. Come in. Dr. Morrison, we have decided to push down more trees tomorrow morning at the same place where the burning rocks were found. Good. Would you get the satchel that I packed the other day, and I'll put some more things in it. Or if you'd like to come with us, you can find something to wear in there. I'll check my gear, and then we'll be on our way. Fine.
another herd heading for the river. Can't we get through? No, not until the pass. Uh, no telling how long that'll take. We might as well rest here for a while. Fine. I'll build you a fire. Good. We're almost through washing the elephant, and the river drive is about ready to start. What about the canoe? It's already tied at the shore. Good morning, Mr. Trot. Are you crossing the river? Yes, why? Oh, would you give us a lift? The boat only carries four. Good. One, two, three, four. I will go to the bend and swim across. I shall meet you at the edge of the clearing by the big tree. Water drive is about ready to start. Why are they stringing that cable across the river? You see, there are two wild herds out there. When the beaters drive them together, they're stopped by the cable, and then the beaters can drive them ashore more easily. The Karahuti has signals. Here they come. The what? Karahuti. That's the killer. Watch.
Oh, there should be some fine ones in this bunch for you, Mr. Trosk. Yes, this will about finish my buying for the season. But, Mr. Trosk... Look, Dr. Ames. beaters make, the more confused the herd becomes. But aren't they liable to attack the beaters? No, not necessarily. Some may bolt, but most of them will be crowded ashore. We can go across now. Come on, let's get back to the boat. See, Dr. Ames, the choice teak is floated down the river about 50 miles to the big lumber mill. The rest is dragged to the village for building stockades. How do they keep track of the logs on the river? Relay parties run along the bank and watch for jams and other troubles until it reaches the mill.
let's see if we can find Sabu. He should be around here somewhere. Sabu! Dr. Morrison! We're pushing down more trees, same place where we found the burning rock. Come! one now. Come on, let's see what we can find. Wait. Down another one. Ready here, Doctor. Sabu, remember this place, because if these rocks don't show anything, we'll have to come back for more specimens. All right, Doctor.
This one shows definite signs of radioactivity. You know, there's so much material available. I really do think you ought to plan to remain here and continue your research. <laughs> really, I... Besides, you could be very important to my future in more ways than one. Exactly what do you mean by that? Well, I really do think we make an excellent combination. Whatever would people think? They'd think I was the luckiest guy in the world, having a gal like you for wife. Why, Dr. Morrison. Why not, Dr. Ames? 